listeners. My name is Myrna Haskell. I'm executive editor of Sanctuary Magazine. This is an online publication for women that empowers and inspires with a focus on the arts, humanitarian and philanthropic pursuits, health and wellness, inspirational travel, career, and finance. You can find us at sanctuary-magazine.com. This morning, my guest is Lorraine Salmon. She is executive director of the Ulster Community College Foundation. This foundation sponsors the President's Challenge Scholarship Fund. Good morning, Lorraine, how are you? Good morning, Marina, just fine, thank you. Okay, I wanted to start out though by letting listeners know that the Ulster Community College Foundation sponsored us again once, once again this year for our annual Focus on Youth issue, which happens each August, where we promote young women artists, future community leaders, um, young females who have already started nonprofits. So it's, it's a great space for, you know, promoting youth and you folks promote youth all the time through your program. So we really appreciate the support there. But today is about the President's Challenge Scholarship. And so I wanted to start off by asking you about the inspiration behind starting this scholarship fund. Oh, that's awesome. That's, an, uh, that's a, a lob pitch for me. Um, the inspiration was actually our president. Our sixth president is Dr. Alan Roberts. He came to us in 2015, which was right after I took the position as executive director. And he came to us with this amazing uh, concept and dream of bringing um, the knowledge of a um, college tuition scholarship to students long before they're graduating from college. And particularly in Ulster County, his vision was to bring this to all school districts in Ulster County, specifically to eighth grade students. So as they embark uh, into the ninth grade, they already know that they would be going to college. It's a two year tuition scholarship. That's, that's fabulous. And um, so how are the students nominated? What are the specific require eligibility requirements? Well, we, we launched it beginning in 2016. We started in one school district, uh, Rondat, which is a neighboring school district. And the students, um, and now we've rolled it out across all nine um, school districts in the county. But the students are advised by outreach from their usual outreach from their middle school. Um, they get notes home to the parents. They have um, email blasts. They have phone um, call blasts home to parents and guardians. And then we do outreach in the community, um, sometimes in churches and through our colleagues on our foundation board and any and actually anybody who has heard about the scholarship, we welcome them to extend information and remind um, families that have eighth grade students in Ulster County to apply for this scholarship. It is for first in family to attend college and that is our goal. And I love that about it, that it's first in family. So hopefully that starts something within the family and there's more education going on because it's so important, right, that we're educating our youth and that they have the opportunity if that's what they want to do. Um, but what I particularly love about this when I really dug into the program to see what it was about is how unique it is. Because so many scholarship funds, you know, you get the free tuition or part tuition or whatever it's giving the student, but it's not following them all through high school. So I read about your mentor program and you um, offer other resources for the students so that they're more college ready when they get to SUNY Ulster. So do you want to talk a little bit about some of those programs that help the students out? That's lovely, yes. So we have three different levels of um, assistance and mentorship, so to speak. So first is each student has um, a donor who we call a sponsor. And sometimes the sponsor is an individual, sometimes the sponsor is a company, and sometimes the sponsor is a fund. Um, folks have graciously left us assets during their planned giving of their estates. And so sometimes those uh, funds and assets are also sponsoring a student. Um, so those are the sponsors that the students also have college mentors. The college mentors are staff employees of SUNY Ulster, and we have mentors assigned to each of the nine school districts. And they work um, on a monthly basis with the students, checking on them, checking in with them, encouraging them and working with them. Plus the students then come to our college twice a year. It's called a campus visit. We'll be able to send you a photo of students were on site yesterday and the day before. Oh, that's so had, great. <laughs> yeah. 
So they yeah, because lots campus. of times students wait till like just before they're going to go to sort of get a feel for the climate and the vibe. And this way, they almost feel already at home there when I when they get there. I would think, right? Sure. The most meaningful thing that I've seen uh, evidence in this program is a so now they're in the ninth grade, eighth grade when they're awarded the scholarship, they're commencing from the eighth grade, and then ninth grade um, they're attending. And so ninth grade students all across Ulster County have already received their SUNY Ulster ID badge by coming to the campus visit and being made an official student of SUNY Ulster. Oh, that's terrific. So are they able to actually go on to the SUNY Ulster campus and utilize the library and those kinds of things at that point then? They are. They learn how to log into our system and they're able to do those things. Oh, that's that's so wonderful. So I'm hearing that you, so it launched the school year of 2016, 2017. Is that correct? Yeah. So you've had a few years now that you've been doing the program. And what I've heard is that you've grown exponentially. So I'm wondering if you want to, and you know, you can pat yourself on the back for that, but I'm wondering if you want to talk a little bit about how it started, numbers of students, how it's grown, and perhaps do you have any future plans for expanding it outside Ulster County at all? Sure, that's awesome. So the first year was 16-17-2016. We, um, we had six sponsors um, at the Rondout School District come forward. We raised just over $40,000. And um, six students were awarded the PCS scholarship. The following year, we added five to Rondout. And we started in Kingston uh, with five in Kingston. So then we had the 10 from that year and the six from the year before. So we're at 16 and the next year we were at 37. And so that combined, we were moving forward towards our usual cohort. Our goal cohort is 50 students annually. So after the 37, it was 48, 49 and 50. Wow. Last year was our first sellout year. And we found sponsors for, we raised $360,000 for wow. 50 students college education. Oh, that's just, that, you know, makes my heart sing when I hear that. That's absolutely wonderful. So you've really, really been growing. Any thoughts about maybe doing something outside of Ulster County at some point? I know there's, there's a lot of listeners that are all over the state of New York. Um, so it, I mean, is that a possibility at all? Are you thinking about it? Sure. I just recently was out to lunch with um, somebody who sponsors uh, two students so far in this program. And he told me that his brother was interested in sponsoring. And one of the things that um, he wanted from the sponsorship was for us to show um, another community college how to run this program and, and kind of roll it out for them. But that was already in play because President Roberts, it has always been his goal to roll this out statewide. So over the course of 2016 till now, 2021, we did successfully roll it out from one school district, one school district to all nine in Ulster County. And so- That's unbelievable. Yeah. But bringing it back to that whole nurture piece, I mean, that's what I think is so wonderful about this and why when other people hear about it, they're going to want to do it is because the students are actually nurtured through high school for this. So if they started out thinking, wow, I got the scholarship, but I never really envisioned going to college. Am I good enough? You know, it has to lift their self-esteem, getting those kinds of supports and resources throughout. By the time they get there, they're ultra ready, right? I think so. And I think that they don't know what they're walking into. You know, in the eighth grade, they're doing it because a parent or guardian thinks it's a good idea or a neighbor or somebody at church, somebody brought this forward to them. And um, I interviewed, I just sat with two girls um, who were having lunch two days ago in our um, cafeteria during the program and they were ninth graders. And so I just flat out asked them, I said, so when you were awarded the scholarship, were you excited and did you have any idea what this meant to you? And they both started laughing and they said, no. And then I said, so after being here today and getting your ID and meeting um, faculty and staff and getting to know a little bit about our campus and our college and the possibilities, do you feel differently? And they both said, you know, yes. And they were you know, kind of squirming and they said they were really excited. And so. By the time they're seniors, they're going to be super ready, right? So that's the idea. Yes. And when we see the juniors and seniors, you know, they come in, they're so much more casual. They know the campus. You know, they're not, um, 
they're just they're they're steeped in the community and they're ready for it it's really right. have you do, have you followed any of the students so that that first group of students the 2016 2017 year are they still at SUNY, SUNY Ulster at this point or have they just graduated this year I was trying to figure that out are they they are, they are first group? We've, we've had two students go off to four-year colleges already because they decided to do that early which is just another win-win and yeah. then any student, um, for anybody who's interested in donating, any student who moves on before they've um, used all of their scholarship, we actually use those scholarship funds as re-awards to that same school district to help somebody else who might have been a runner-up and didn't get the scholarship. But if if um, they're still there, we can re-award to them and bring them in. Oh, that's great. that's great. That's right great. Away. What about the donors themselves? Do they sort of, um, do they follow the students at all? Is there any back and forth once, you know, they, they donate in, when the student's in the eighth grade? Um, is there any sort of a connection there with the donors at all? Do you know? That's a great question. We actually invite the donors to join us on the campus visit days. So Good. yesterday and the day before, we had to break the county into two halves because there were so many students in the program now, just under 200. Wow. So we had, about, we had about 100 students each day coming from ninth through 12th grades at all different school districts. And then we invite any donors who are nearby and available on that day who want to come and meet their students or see them again, they can come and they attend the lunch portion of the visit. And they got to um, hang out and be with those um, students for about an hour, an hour and a half. And that's really rewarding to watch that and see that. I bet, and that's gonna um, probably extend a longevity for the donors too, because if they actually can meet the student, see how well they're doing and see that they've done a great thing in a child's life, they might choose to do it again too. Do you, would you like to um, just dig in a little bit more with anything else you'd like to say about either the foundation or the scholarship? And perhaps for those listeners who are thinking about, wow, this might be something I wanna do, become a donor if there's different levels or, um, types of donorship that, that you offer? Sure. Well, first of all, um, Sanctuary Magazine is going to post a link for us, an info link to yes. all of the information for the program so you can see it um, real time. And then my, uh, my name is Lorraine Salmon and my contact information is right there. But as far as the program, it is $7,200 to sponsor a student's two-year um, college education at SUNY Ulster. Uh, donors, uh, some donors um, donate that in the first year of their sponsorship. Other donors um, are able to uh, contribute $1,800 a year for four years. So as the student is in ninth, 10th, 11th, and 12th grade, the sponsor can um, fund their scholarship, so to speak, at $1,800 a year for four years. Other people um, grab another couple or another person. I, I say to people, if you play pinochle or poker with anybody, or if you have um, a dinner group that you get together, you can just take everything and, um, and, and this is all in the link that I provide, but you can just take it and cut it in half. So if two couples are doing it, then it's $3,600 a couple. And then if, instead of $1,800 a year, it's $900 a year per couple. And that starts to be a little more affordable for people. And then if you get four people to do it, you can cut that in half. And I say to folks at $450 a year for four years, you're changing a life forever. And it's really not costing you any more than, um, you know, three or four or five dinners out. Yes, during the course that's, of the that's a good analogy. That's perfect. Well, um, anything you want to share just like from your heart about something you saw with one of the students or a student that particularly made you remember what the initial inspiration behind the foundation was or anything that you want to share with somebody, maybe a student you got to know just a little bit more personally, like what you saw and how they carried themselves once they got into the school, anything like that you'd like to share? Yeah, I would just say that kind of globally looking at the population, um, there isn't any one of us who have worked in this program who hasn't been kind of brought to their knees in tears witnessing what we're witnessing we've had we've not just one or two or three students but if you imagine interviewing 50 students a year um, across the county and um you know quite often when the students leave the interview we have to scurry them out because we're diving into a box of tissues because their their plights and their situations are often um heart-wrenching and um yeah one who comes to mind 
was a young um, woman, I don't want to say which school district, and she cried through the entire interview, just oh. sobbed, grabbing her breath, sobbing. And so, of course, when she started, I offered to stop and I, you know, offered to wait. And um, I asked her if she wanted to continue. And she said, yes. And I said, well, I told her I'm a crier too. So, so I know how you're feeling and I'm guessing you're not going to be able to stop crying now that you started. And, and she nodded. <laughs> See, look, that's it. And I said, okay, so I just want you to know we're all good. You can cry all the way through the interview. It's okay. And she said, okay. We asked her all of the questions and she's being interviewed. This is good for everyone to know. The students in the eighth grade are being interviewed often by the president of our college, the principal of their middle school, their guidance counselor, maybe a board member, a senior staff member from our college. So four or five adults are interviewing an eighth grader and they are just amazing. They show up sometimes with ties on and suit jackets and everyone is kind of putting their best self forward, um, the girls and the guys. And anyway, so this young lady cried through the whole thing. And then when we were done, I asked her if she wanted to share with us why she was crying. And she said that... Um, her mother had um, her mother had fostered many 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 children, and she had only adopted one of those foster children, and it was her. And she just wanted to make her proud. Oh. And the next day, I received a phone call. Anyway, the student was awarded the scholarship, and the next day, I got a phone call from the mother, and the, I shared that with her with the fo with the foster mother who had adopted her, and I said. Um, how many foster children have you had? And she said, 16. And I thought she said 16. And she said, no, 60. Oh my God. Said goodness. you had 60 foster children? Wow. And so she had fostered for like 40 years. Wow. So this is just one student coming out of a yes. home where somebody had fostered 60 students, children, and she was just one trying to claw her way through mm -hmm. a, to a better life. It's just that real time making a difference and visually seeing that, you know, um, and it must be something else too, to see them then graduate. So these first students are going through and now graduating from SUNY Ulster and some of them moving on to a four-year degree. So it's, it's just, it's a, that's a wonderful story, Lorraine. Thank you so much for sharing that. I think it gives sure. the listeners a little bit more of an intimate view of what the foundation is actually doing through the scholarship. I applaud you. I'm keeping my fingers crossed for you that it does go and you have the expansion to other schools throughout New York State because I think it's a fabulous thing you're doing for these kids. So thank you again for being with me this morning. I will close as I always do by wishing all of our listeners and our readers good health, happiness, and continued inspiration. Until the next time. Thank you, Verna.